Hello rugby fans and welcome back to the channel. Welcome once again to my Bristol Bears Rugby Challenge for Career Mode. We are at round 10. I have simulated a game. I've got a new plan for this series going forward so that we can get through and get to the nitty gritty of things. But before I let you know about that and before we get into today's video, please do drop a like if you enjoy this content. Leave a comment down below, I get back to all of them. Let me know what you think of this series and the players selected, the tactics used and just anything really, I get back to all of them. If you haven't already and you're new around here, please do move that subscribe button and let's get into it. So if I go back to competition info and schedule, we were due to take on Gloucester. Um, but I've decided that teams sort of towards the bottom half of the table, I will more than likely be skipping and simulating now. Of course, the teams in sort of the top six or so, I will be playing just to try and keep us at the top of the table. But we've still got a good 12 or so games to play before we get to the final stages. And I feel now that I'm at the point with this series where you guys aren't as into it as it was at the start. Of course, we're in the second season now. Um, you know, it's, it's all pretty similar. I've reduced the times down, but I feel like you guys want to see sort of new and fresh content. So just like I did with Rugby Union Team Manager 3, I think I'm going to start simulating games against the lower teams and trying to get to the playoffs and the nitty gritty end of the season as quickly as possible before wrapping up this series. Of course, as we head towards the end of the year and towards next year, we will be seeing more and more from Rugby 22. And of course, I'll be starting career modes on that as well. I do also have my EA Sports Rugby 08 World League series, which will be continuing for the foreseeable future. Um, so that'll always be there. And then perhaps in the back of my mind as well, I've got a thought about starting a new Rugby Union Team Manager series, but with a lower ranked team. So there's plenty still to look forward to on the content. And this series is certainly not finished yet, but we will be getting through it a bit quicker. Now, after the win against Gloucester, if I go back, I'm not sure if they show you exactly who's... Ah, here we go. So, 37 points to 14. Five tries scored. So, again, another bonus. O'Connor and Radradra. All things looking good. And uh, next up, if we go back to the table, we've got the Saints and Worcester Warriors. So, I think I may simulate both of these games as well two teams in the bottom half of the table we'll just check out my squad because Sheedy should be ready to go again now and so should Malins of course at the end of the last episode we did see about the um, international announcements um, so we'll bring Sheedy on for Tiff Eden onto the bench and then Yoan Lloyd will set the roles here of Goal kicker and play kicker, exit rolls, and then we'll look to get Malins involved. He's such a class player. We'll probably move O'Connor to inside centre and then get Malins on the wing, I would say. Um, yeah, we'll go like that. Malins 85 rated. Of course, in real life, Malins and Earl are no longer with us, unfortunately and have gone back to Saracens. But there we go. Let's simulate this game against the Saints and it's another thumping victory, although we have had a red card. So Atwood is suspended for 14 games and now the international duty is kicked in for the next matchup. So not ideal. Atwood has been suspended. But if we go to the schedule, Another convincing 42-point win. Five tries scored again. Two for Sheedy, which is good to see in his first game back. So the winning streak continues. We'll have to go to my squad here and make some changes ready for the next game. Uh, we need a lock, really, which we haven't got in great supply. We've got John Hawkins. I think we might have to move the skipper, Luatua, there. And then we'll put 
left hand Thomas on at flanker. And then we're going to have to make some big changes here. Cape on international duty, which is obviously good to see. Harry Thacker will be going on. And then Jake Armstrong will be coming on for Carl Sinclair. And then who else have we got? Of course, Malins is now on international duty. So that should just be a straight swap here. Randall will be coming back on. He's a lot fitter now after a bit of a break. And we'll probably leave it at that. But we need to bring Yoan Lloyd onto the bench here. We then need a replacement on the bench for Atwood. Which is probably going to have to be Hawkins. And then we're going to need to replace Capon with Brian Byrne. Sinclair comes off. We need another tight head. Again, doesn't seem to be much there. So we're going to have to put a loose head on and just hope for the best. Jan Thomas will be the man. So there we go. And again, we will be simulating this one against Worcester. And another victory, which is great to see. Uh, if we go back to the schedule, just see how it went. Four tries scored, so... Just going well, Lua Tua, Nathan Hughes amongst the try scorers. If we go to the table now, we are looking good with three points clear, eight bonus points, which is more than anyone else in the league. Still only three points clear of sale. Bath in third, Wasps fourth. But now is the big one. It is the local derby, the Bears versus Bath, first versus third in the table. It is going to be a big one, and I'm looking forward to seeing how we get on here. So let's get off to the match. Here we go then, Twickenham Stadium. Bath of the home team. Fireworks, fire, everything going off. It's a humongous matchup. First versus third. And as well as that, they of course are our local rivals as well. we got Benno Urbano. we got Zach Mercer. Rhys Priestland, Jonathan Joseph, Anthony Watson, so a strong, strong team. But we are strong as well, of course. We have got international call-ups, which is not ideal, but every team is in the same situation. They've got Underhill on the bench, Spencer on the bench. So they got a strong, strong reserve lineup. But let's get things underway. Sheedy to kick us off. Great to be controlling Sheedy again. Of course, we're still on the pro difficulty. Release. Ten minute matchups. The hardest difficulty on the game. You know, one of the main reasons as well for trying to wrap this series up quite quickly again now is just the gameplay isn't as fun as it should be. It really isn't. She oh, I thought Sheedy was away there, but good interception. We are still inside the bar half. They have got possession now. And yeah, don't get me wrong. I think Rugby Challenge 4 is probably the best current day game out there to get. Just mainly because of the mods and the, the edit mode. And, you know, you can update things. High tackle there from Bath, which looks to be a yellow card. It is. So a player in the sim bin for Bath. Um, yep, yeah, so like I said, the editing and creating and the mods and everything you get on PC is obviously very, very good. Poor kick from Sheedy. Didn't take into account the win too much. But as far as gameplay goes, it just frustrates me. Look, this player here is, is just walked through three tackles. The Just the scrappiness, the dirtiness of it. Big, big kick. Charles Piertel coming up there terrible camera angle you can't even see who's chasing things down luckily for us it is us and we've got to the ball first yeah the gameplay just isn't as fun as games like even rugby 08 rugby champions you know arguably the um gameplay on rugby 20 is even better than than this you know it's good to begin with and you know it's just repetitive not realistic the passing the offloading is all over the place release and um yeah just looking forward to something fresh with rugby 22 
course, I'm not saying that's going to be the perfect Release. game. It certainly had its faults. The graphics were terrible. It really did look terrible, but can we get him out of touch? We do. Fabulous defending by Charles Pietal, the last man. Substitution from Bath already. We're only seven minutes, 17 minutes in. Not even halfway through the first half. Yeah, hopefully Rugby 22, especially on next generation consoles, will be a bit of a step up from Rugby 20. Because the gameplay hopefully will be adjusted and will be a lot a lot of fun. Like, Advantage. You know, it wasn't perfect in any way, Rugby 20, but it's more fun than this. It really is. Hopefully with a few more licenses, updated graphics, and it'll be something good and something fresh to keep an eye on. Of course, they do also have the My Squad mode as well, which would be interesting. I've always wondered about the over. Rugby Ultimate Team. Of course, I've done an Ultimate Team video as well before, and that went down well on the channel. Been forced back, so Bath putting us under Mind. incredible pressure. I'm going to stop talking about different rugby video games now and try and concentrate on this. Bath have the ball. Big pressure. And there we go. Look, just two players t are tackling that player then. And he just walks straight through. Reese Priestland. First points of the game go to Bath, unfortunately. But if we re-watch re this, done so well there to not let their scrum go anywhere pass it to Riso. one tackle two tackle three tackle it's just not realistic it's just not good knock this over between the posts and bath a seven points to the good about halfway through um, half hour through this first half so we've got 10 minutes to try and turn things around before half time Crunch and tackle from Siali, but I mean, just look at that offload. Who does that in real rugby? A blind overhead behind the back offload. I should have um, checked as well, actually, on the table whether Bath was still in this win streak that they've been on about. Semi now with a possibility of getting to the try line. He's on the five meter line. Come on, boys, support him. Where's the pods? We've got a pod to the right. Hughes. Making up lots of ground there. Still got the ball. Again, knocking down the doors. Jan Thomas. Oh, Dan Thomas even. Of course it's Dan Thomas. Jan Thomas isn't even playing. But Dan Thomas has gone off injured. So we're going to have to bring on Hawkins, unfortunately. And it's not great to see. Possibly Hawkins' first Crouch. involvement, but we do have a scrum. Five minutes left in this first half. Good, good, solid scrum here. Lovely push. Number eight pickup, Hughes. Not good enough. The Bath defenders certainly done us then. We'll go out left. We've got a slight overlap, and Siali's gone in just before half time into the corner. Bristol Bears first score of the game. Siali Piatau, of course, no longer with the Bears in real life. But still moving mad in this career mode. Went to the blind side there because we had a little overlap. There was another player just behind, I think, Piers O'Connor. It's a great stuff from Siali. Now Callum Sheedy looking to level things up. Before half time, let's come a bit further back. Give us more. Uh, we want to go slightly right, I think. We'll just wait for the clock to tick down so we can go straight to half time. And Shido levels the game up. Seven points apiece. It's been an intriguing first half, that's for sure. First versus third and local bragging rights. We're dominating territory, which is good. Bath dominating possession. Just the one handling error. Still not amazing, but at least it's a lot less than we usually expect in 
certain games we've played. Bath to kick us off. Earl picks it up. Pass to Sheedy. Unfortunately, he's put under a bit of pressure. Lua Tua. Just absolutely terrible. No one there. Luckily, Semi was there to cover the ground. Release. Oh, we've gone the wrong way. Half again running into just... It just doesn't look pretty, does it, this game? Just players running into absolute loads of other players. Nice little offload there, though. Putting players through. We're offside. Get back onside. Bath. Players out wide. Lovely pass inside. Put them down. Unbelievable. You going to look at the TMO there? Zach Mercer tries scored again. One of those where just barging through players. Ready? Inside pass. Tackle. No, 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 no. And another one. No. Look, he hasn't touched the ball down at all. Where is the TMO? Shambles. That was clearly held up. And Priestland has put Bath seven points clear again. Unbelievable. Sheedy then to get us back underway and the Bears again have a mountain to climb. They want to win this one. Bowie starting, starting well though. Hawkins. Forward pass by Bath. Luckily we got away with it there. Can we come up with an instant Set. reply? Good strong pushes. Alright, let's get out wide. Gotta be Nalago. Gotta be. Yes, it is. Instant reply from the Bears. The main man, Siva Nalago, again. Just a try scoring machine for the Bears this season. More set piece wonders from the scrum. Always handy that set piece. It always seems to leave the winger in a lot of space, getting that quick ball out to him. Anthony Watson perhaps there could have uh, attempted a last ditch tackle, but he doesn't. Now Sheedy once again looking to level up this game. With about 20 minutes or so left. What can we do? Gonna have to make some substitutions, I think, or at least have a little check. Armstrong not looking great there. So we're gonna bring Lahif on. Hawkins is only just really come on, so I mean he doesn't need anything apart from that. Seems to be okay. Benno. Getting the ball knocked out of his hands. Siali has been taken down in a crowd of Bath players. All of the Bears players just sitting there twiddling their thumbs. Advantage. There we go. For a moment, me controller had disappeared for some reason and turned itself off. We are back, and luckily nothing really happened there. Crouch. Bind. Set.
Right, here we go. We are back, guys. Unfortunately, having a few controller issues. The old controller run out. We are back to it now with a scrum looking to go out wide. Piers O'Connor with a big old long kick. Can we put Bath under pressure? I think it's going to go out. It is. So not ideal. Dead ball. Looking for a little chip. Not anything with that amount of power. Crouch. Bind. Bath are going for the scrum. Set. Oh, lovely. We've turned it. Just over 10 minutes left and we've turned the scrum. Nalago looking dangerous as always. Bursting through the space. Can he get clear? He can. Under the sticks. Siva Nalago, that man again just causes problems in defences. He has been on fire for us this season. Out to see, he comes inside, cuts off that player, goes through the space. He's got about four Bath players chasing him, but he's too powerful, he's too athletic, and he's under the posts. Sheedy to convert. Bit of wind there. This is key with about 10 minutes left that he knocks this over, and he does. So a seven point advantage. Let's see how Bath go from here. Short kickoff. Thaka has picked it up. So if we can get some support there, which we don't, unfortunately. So Bath have ripped it from the kickoff. Back inside. Offloads galore. We need to win it back. We've got five minutes left. We cannot allow Bath a score. Just trying, just trying to get Release. something. Bath are just happy to keep passing it around inside. Looking to go backwards. Back over halfway now, which is a good sign. Hughes takes down the defend uh, the Bath player. I've got a bit of space out wide. Another crunching Release. tackle. The klaxon is coming up. 80 minutes are up. We just need to win this ball back. Randall is offside. Inside, outside, inside, outside. Just not realistic. And we've won it back. Sheedy, a foa. Just get... Sheedy, what are you doing? Just kick it. Come on. Go back. Sheedy has kicked it. Is it going out? It is. The Bears pick up the hard-fought victory against their rivals. What a match that was. And it should put some a little bit more space between them. With Bath in third and Bristol at top. Three tries, Piertau, two for Nalago. Bath dominating possession, had more territory as well. Again, the handling errors crept up, five for the Bears. But a 21 point to 14 victory is all we should worry about. So here we are then, Gut. We've got another message. Dan Thomas has pinched a nerve and will be unavailable to play for 10 weeks. That is a hell of a lot of time. But let's go to the table. And the Bears still only two points clear. Sale is certainly sticking with us. But a gap is now opening up between the third and fourth place teams. Bath and Wasps. Nine points to Bath. So that is good and the victory is coming strong there. I'm not sure whether we did beat their undefeated streak. But Bristol and Sale are both... On five game winning streaks. Poor old Newcastle haven't won a game this season. So yeah, that is good to see. Now that we are sort of around halfway, let's take a look at the statistics. Um, it's the best thing to see. So win ratio is 80, 8, 0 0.83. Drawn one, lost one. Average point scored 28. 
Let's see the player stats. I want to see big Siva Nalago, really. There he is. 15 tries scored. Blimey. That is humongous, isn't it? Great stuff from him. But there we go. So next up, we have Harlequins in the next episode. So I believe they're in the top five. So we will be playing that matchup. Thanks a lot for checking out this video today, guys. If you've enjoyed, please do drop a like. Leave a comment down below. I get back to all of them. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It really means a lot. And I'll see you in the virtual scrum game.